and talked about. This is the largest trove of data from any single terrorist that the government uh, has found. What are you learning now that we didn't know before? Well, I think they're going after it on several levels, David. The first thing you want to find out is imminent threat information. The second layer of detail you want to find out is locational information and al-Qaeda leadership. And then the third, and this is the long-term effort, you're essentially creating an encyclopedia of how al-Qaeda operates, uh, what their system is, their tactics, their techniques, their procedures. This, this is wonderful, not just in its size, but we have not gotten what we call SSE, sensitive site exploitation, going in and getting materials on al-Qaeda leadership for several years. So it's big and it's new. It was, it was the understanding of the intelligence community, Secretary Chertoff, that uh, after 9-11, he, he no longer became operationally involved. Now, we're seeing these videos, difficult to know, but you heard Donald say, no, we think he was more directly in control. What do you think that means? Well, I think it's going to cause us to evaluate a little bit uh, more about what the leadership structure is mm -hmm. and what his role was, and uh, in particular to look at the material that's being exploited and to see whether there are, in fact, leads that can take us to uh, protect against future attacks. That being said, we always knew, and I think it's still clear, that there was a cadre of very experienced leaders below bin Laden, people like uh, Shukri Juma or uh, Abu Yahya al-Libi or Alaki in Yemen, and those are still in place. And so part of what we need to do is try to understand what their tactics and strategy are based upon the material that we find in this uh, treasure trove. Mayor Giuliani, uh the question of what this represents against al-Qaeda, a death blow or something else. This is certainly a significant development. A, a very significant development. Removing a leader uh, of the significance of, of uh, this man is, is extraordinary. I mean, this is like removing a Hitler or a Stalin in the middle of, of, those, of those conflicts. He's going to be very hard to replace. And it, it's a, a symbolic blow for an organization that feeds a lot on emotion. This is a decentralized organization that's tied together by their feelings and emotions. So removing this man will help a lot. But it's not a death blow by any means. I mean, this is a pretty decentralized organization. Over the last couple of years, they've been operating in Yemen, other places, so they're not operating in just one place. And I think they're particularly angry at us right now. So long term, this is a fabulous, terrific development, making us safer. Short term, it presents some very substantial risks, which I think the administration is aware of. Secretary Chirpa, I want to play a, a piece of an interview I did this week as part of our press pass conversation, of, uh, something we do weekly that's up on our website, with Steve Cole, the author of Ghost Wars, who knows al-Qaeda so well, uh, asked about uh, what al-Qaeda is still capable of. And this is what he said in part. Al-Qaeda is a resilient organization, but it is not spreading or growing. So it has the capability to carry out attacks such as the one we saw Christmas before last, where an Al-Qaeda affiliate tried to blow up and almost did blow up an American airliner with several hundred people aboard. Now that is, I think, a fair approximation of its capacity. Once in a while, it could kill hundreds of people. That ought to get our attention, but it need not be the basis for organizing every aspect of our national life or our national defense. Do you agree with that or not? Well, I don't know if I would agree that it's not spreading. I mean, I think if you look over the last few years, you've seen a greater presence of al-Qaeda or an affiliation with al-Qaeda in North Africa, obviously in Yemen and Somalia, and even in parts of Central Africa. I think what's interesting is this. We don't know to what extent the uh, strategy of going for the big uh, attack, which we've always presumed was a core uh, element of the strategy, was driven by bin Laden personally. Now that he's gone, there may be uh, an opportunity for some others have different views about the style of attacks to begin to shape the strategy. For example, does that mean more Mumbai attacks, where instead of blowing up an airliner, you're bringing simultaneous armed attacks on a number of different facilities? So while this is, on the one hand, a great advantage, eliminating bin Laden, on the other hand, we have to be more careful than ever to look at what may be tactical changes in how they move forward. Uh, General Hayden, are you concerned that they didn't capture him alive? Um, no. I mean, it, it, it might have provided some intelligence advantages, but I doubt very much more than we're going to get from the documents and the hard drives and the disks and so on. No, I, I understand quite well. And then you, would have, then you would have had somebody in our custody, and that would have been in the news every day and motivating people, perhaps people now who would be less interested in coming to kill us because of some of the videos uh, that we've been able to show. Let me follow up with all of you on this other ongoing debate that I asked Mr. Donilon about. 
interrogations, the counter-terror policies uh, after 9-11, specifically waterboarding. General Hayden, isn't it something of an open question as to whether that you can tie that moment to this moment? In other words, harsh interrogation, waterboarding of suspected terrorists ultimately led us to bin Laden. Can we make that declarative well, statement? I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't describe it that way. I'd describe it the way Director Panetta has done in some public commentaries, that one of the key threads that we began this from about four years ago came from information from CIA detainees, and all of those particular detainees did indeed have enhanced interrogation techniques used against them. So you, you can't deny that we got valuable information from these folks. Now, Director Panetta went on to say, it's just an open question whether we may have gotten them from other means. But the fact of the matter is, we did it this way, and this way worked. Uh, Mayor Giuliani, but you heard a declarative statement from Secretary Rumsfeld who said anybody who questions whether waterboarding worked is simply denying facts. How can you make that assertion with such, with such uh, certainty? Well, obviously, you can't make it with certainty uh, unless the administration reveals all the data, which they're not. But right. I, I thought Mr. Donilon's failure to answer your question spoke very loudly about the fact that waterboarding, enhanced interrogation techniques, played a significant role in this. Maybe not the critical role, maybe the critical role, but certainly a significant role. And it just makes sense. I mean, these, these kinds of materials are not obtained uh, easily. And this but, tremendous but amount it, of material... It may, sense, it may, it may not make sense. I mean, isn't, isn't that the point, Secretary Chertoff, which is, look... Uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was waterboarded 183 times. And based on reporting this week in NBC News outside, he never gave up the truth about the courier that led to bin Laden. So there is, there is still this debate that d doesn't get settled through killing bin Laden. Would you agree with well, that? I, you know, there will be people who will never uh, be persuaded one way or the other about this. And I'm not going to, I don't think I can add anything to it. My but it's a question said, of whether it's knowable. Is right. it objectively knowable? I, I'll tell you what is knowable, David. Go back 10 years. I was head of the criminal division on the day of 9-11. And at that point in time, we had uh, a, a national security apparatus that was stovepiped, that didn't have the ability to integrate information and to act on it in a timely way. Both presidents deserve a lot of credit for maturing the the apparatus over 10 years to the point that, as Tom Donilon said, the president could have confidence mm. that this apparatus would work, taking the intelligence, operationalizing it, moving in real time. That All the pieces of that are part of the puzzle. Some of them some people will like, some of them people won't like, but it's the totality that gave this president the tools that he was able to use to kill bin Laden. General, let me ask you about Pakistan. Sure. Was Pakistan specifically helpful to the United States? with information that ultimately ID'd the couriers that led to bin Laden? I, there's nothing in my personal experience that would prompt me to say yes. Pakistan has helped in some other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, we've captured terrorists in the settled areas of Pakistan, by and large, years ago, not uh, more recently, by and large. But I, I'm not aware of any Pakistani help that led to the events of last weekend. Did Pakistan harbor a terrorist? Well, there was a terrorist in Pakistan that seemed to feel like he was very safe. And as Mr. Donald said, they've got a lot of questions to answer, and the burden of proof is on them. Uh, uh, Mayor Giuliani, you heard Donilon say that it's Pakistan that's going to investigate this, and this is a big deal in Pakistan. What are the ramifications for this as more becomes clearer about what they and when? The ramifications are uh, huge because Pakistan is a critical country. It's a country with nuclear weapons. If uh, bin Laden could have this kind of access uh, to the government and get this kind of protection, if that's the case, we don't know that it is, what does that say about the security of the nuclear weapons and what does it say about the uh, military force there and how, mm -hmm. how, uh, how secure it really is? So it, this has huge implications. And before we all comment on it, we better, better be right about it. Uh, I want to ask quickly about Afghanistan as well, General Hayden. Uh, there are going to be people who say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, let's focus narrowly on counterterror, as uh, uh, this t president did. Let's, let's accelerate that withdrawal from Afghanistan. I, I think we need to see how this plays out, David. It, it, this is not a singular event that then has us making a sharp break left or right. We'll see what the impact of this is. There are lots of reasons for what it is we're doing in Pakistan, going after in bin Laden. Or, I'm sorry, in Afghanistan, uh, going after bin Laden is, is but one of them. Let's see what happens to this network now. Let's see what they do. As Secretary Chertoff said, uh, we could get a lot more biodiversity, so to speak, and the kinds of threats coming after us. If bin Laden did have such a controlling hand, now you're going to have more independent actors and perhaps more agile actors. So let's wait. What happens now? I mean, are these guys on the run? Uh, from an operational point of view, does our tempo increase as these guys are now under pressure? Our, temp our tempo should increase. Uh, the rule in warfare reinforced success. This could be a bit of the pursuit phase 
and we should, we should press the fight. Mayor Giuliani, I want to take you back to the end of this week. Um, this president, nearly a decade after President Bush visited...